the board will take formal action on agenda items. Mr. Mara. The Old Bridge Township Board of Education acknowledges that the law of this state establishes that members of the public, including members of the board, have the right to record public board meetings using audio or video recording devices, providing that that act of recording does not interfere with the business of this public board meeting. Therefore, the board makes it known that any such recording is to be considered the private recording of the individual and in no manner represents the official record of this board. The board therefore takes no responsibility for such private recording and completely disavows any future use. Call Mr. Mayor. Borsilli? Here. DePrima? Here. Dunn? Here. Hopman? Here. Mongan? Here. Singh? Here. Sulikowski? Here. Weber? Here. Andriani? Here. A quorum exists. Thank you. Would everyone please rise, Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Would you please remain standing for a moment of silence? Unfortunately, we have two memorials this evening. We would like to acknowledge the death of June Naga, retired secretary, and Mildred Kletcher, a retired nurse, and express the board and the public's deepest sympathy to family and friends. May we have a moment, please? Thank you. The board has decided to um, add to its agenda our Code of Ethics Corner, and we are going to rotate our board members through that, and Mr. Brasilli has volunteered to do that this evening. Okay. Every board member will make decisions in terms of the educational welfare of children and seek to develop and maintain public schools that meet the individual needs of all children, regardless of their ability, race, creed, sex, or social standing. That is within accordance with NJSA 18A colon 12-24.1. Thank you, Mr. Brasilli. Approval of minutes. Okay, prior to that, we do have some administrative changes and okay. uh, Mr. Mara. Okay, for the board members, every item that is in, uh, is, is in yellow on the draft, every item that, that is in yellow was not on the draft agenda for last week's meeting. Every item that is in green is an administrative change to the agenda that was published over the weekend. And, f and all the, there's a schedule of all the administrative changes that has been distributed to the public. Thank you. Approval of minutes, Mr. Mayor. We need a motion for approval of minutes. Mongan will move. Thank you, Ms. Mongan. Sing seconds. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Mr. Mara? Borsilli? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Andriani? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Recognition session, we have five. We're also adding something to that. Um, underneath finance, number three, we have a donation that we would love to accept, and we're going to move that in with the other section with number three for the Elks. So we're just adding a 3A to that. Mr. Cittadino. Recognition number one, one of our favorite recognitions of the year. I believe Dr. Tui will join us at the dais. I move the board, commend the following Old Bridge students for their achievements in the New Jersey Special Olympics Winter Games speed skating competition. Dr. Tui. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'd like to ask Miss Annette Hopman and Miss Allison Voss, president of SEPTA, to please help distribute these awards if you could. Uh, first up, uh, Louis Carbone, medaling in the 100 meter first place and 300 meter second place.
Robert Liu, 300 meter first place, 500 meter first place. My V Nguyen, 300 meter first place, 500 meter first place. Paul Pantano, 100 meter first place, 300 meter first place. Joe Pilchuk, 300 meter third place, 500 meter second place. Stephanie Puccio, 300 meter first place, 500 meter first place. Bobby Big, 25 meter first place, 100 meter first place. And last but certainly not least, Mark Zeloff, 300 meter second place, 500 meter first place. Just very quickly, I would also like to thank all the volunteers, both Oldbridge High School students and numerous coaches who dedicate countless hours to these excellent and worthwhile activities. Thank you all very much. Also, also uh, SEPTA Field Day is on May 4th, and the Spring SEPTA Concert is on May 12th. Please mark your calendars. We look to see you all there. Thank you very much. Mr. Cittadino, number two, our SA winners. All right, at this time, I believe Rocco Solentano, our supervisor of literacy and social studies, and Mr. Solikowski will also join him as our uh, board liaison to curriculum to uh, administer. Move the board, recognize the following six SA winners submitted by the Oldbridge Elks Lodge to go to the next level of district judging for the Elks Americanism SA contest. Good evening. The Oldbridge Elks Americanism Essay Contest is just one of many activities that the Oldbridge Elks sponsor for our schools. The Elks have made donations to our high school scholarship awards and to the marching band. They sponsor the Student of the Month program in the middle school and make financial donations to our character education program in our elementary schools. Some of their members are former teachers and administrators. They are friends and family. The Oldbridge Elks are dedicated to our community and they do it because they care about our children. So please welcome Mr. Frank Tevis, who will present the board recognitions. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Frank Tevis. And I'm a member of, I've uh, been a past exalted ruler of Oldbridge Lodge. I'm also a state trustee representing our district. Uh, and on behalf of the Oldbridge Lodge, I'd like to thank the Board of Education and the Central Mis Administration and especially the teachers for their support of our annual American Essay Contest. Um, like Rocco mentioned, who happens to be my son-in-law, uh, Central Administration. <laughs> Central Administration has been extremely supportive of many of our uh, ELK-sponsored programs. Uh, Rocco mentioned the valuable, um, most valuable student program for graduating seniors. Uh, high school students participated in a um, a weekend uh, down in um, Asbury Park with our peer leadership uh, conference program. Uh, we do the student of the month uh, programs at all the middle schools from fifth grade to eighth graders. And on a personal note, I can, I can share with you because I travel without our, without, throughout our district and I can tell you that no lodge receives the type of support that we receive in Oldbridge from the Board of Education and Central Administration. And I wanna thank you. We're very very grateful and appreciative for that response, for that support. Uh, but tonight we will be recognizing 20 students 
who uh, prepared essays that were judged to be the best in their individual school, and the essays that were judged to be best overall. The topic this year was, what does Veterans Day mean to me? So the essays written by the following six students were selected to represent Obridge Lodge, not only in the district, but if they move forward, they will represent Obridge Lodge on a state level. Um, these students, their families, and their teachers will be invited to a dinner at the Lodge in May when we celebrate Youth Week and receive a cash award and a certificate. Now, as I call your name, please come up and Mr. Celentano will give you the certificate. The, um, from Sandberg School, it's KU um, Parikh. From Sandberg School, Isabella Payne. Mm -hmm. oh, she's not there. All right. I'll keep going. From Sandberg School, Emily Yang. From Sandberg School, Nicole Ang. Also from Sandberg School. For I'm gonna have to. This is a tough one. Fahi Rajim Rahim. Mm -hmm. From Sauk School, Eswaya Subash. Now the essays of the following students were judged to be the best in their individual schools. They were already given a $20 Barnes & Noble gift certificate from Obridge Lodge and a certificate of participation. They are, again, please come up when I call your name, from Shepherd School, Ronan, Ro, Ronan uh, Wad, Wadwa. For Madison Park, Trisha Vargas. Yes, mm -hmm. Carpenter School, Joseph Tancredi. <laughs> From Grissom School, Isabella Dismili. McDivick School, Sinai Tobert. <laughs> Sandberg School, <clears throat> Sonny Bott. Sandberg School, Victoria Pococo. From Sork, Chelsea Cuellanorte. Memorial School, Samika Go. Vorhe School, Aria Goyal. <laughs> Southwood School, Maxwell Goldberg. Also from Southwood School, Amanda <coughs> Dianota. <laughs> Sh 
Shirasko Zachary Rakowski. And from Miller School, Shira Kimbabi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, I want to thank all the students that participated and give them a big round of applause. At this time, we're going to move item number seven, seven from finance to this uh, recognition portion. Uh, while we have our representative for the Elks here, I believe he's going to make a very handsome donation to our school district. Thank you. Ms. Kibler. Thank you, Mr. Citadino. It gives me great pleasure to again introduce to you Mr. Frank Tevis. You know, my daughter, my daughter promised me, or I promised my daughter I wouldn't be too long, but I just need one more minute, okay? Um, tonight, I'm very happy to present to the Assistant Superintendent, Mrs. Donna uh, Kibler, a check from the Oberge Oaks in the amount of $1,000 that we would like her to apply to the fourth grade Get Hooked on Fishing, Not on Drugs program that she coordinates with the Township Municipal Allowance. Uh, this uh, drug awareness is one of the committees that the Elks Lodge sponsors, and this, this program fits well in, into meeting our goal as a lodge, and we are happy to assist in this important and relevant and relative initiative. And we look forward to uh, a great future. Rocco mentioned we did, we, uh, two years ago, we, um, we made a donation for the uh, anti-bullying program. Last year we did char building character in our schools, and this year we're very pleased to participate in uh, what we consider our drug awareness program. Thank you very much, Thank Donna. you so much, Mr. Tibbs. Stay right there. <laughs> I'm, extre I'm extremely pleased and honored tonight to further recognize the Old Bridge Elks for their continued support of our programs, students, and staff. We continually strive to strengthen the home school community partnership and certainly, the Old Bridge Elks epitomizes community support for education in Old Bridge. On behalf of the Board of Education, Mr. Solikowski and I graciously accept the donation of $1,000 presented by Mr. Frank Tevis tonight, the Elks representative, to support the cooperative endeavor 
of Hooked on Fishing, Not on Drugs contest for our fourth grade students organized by the Old Bridge Municipal Alliance. With sincere appreciation, Mr. Tavis, we accept this donation. Thank you very much. Thank we really appreciate you being our partner. Thank you. Thank you. And here's Here the you certificate go. for you. Thank you very much. Thank you, very good. Thank you so much. This evening, after the student um, representative speaks, we'll then ask all the uh, children in the audience to get home and prepare for their studying for the night and get to bed early. But uh, if we could just have everyone stay until uh, Chris Simone does his address of student activities. That'll be after two more recognitions. Move the Board of Education to commend Rebecca Yeager, librarian at Southwood School, for her dedication and efforts in refurbishing and restoring Southwood Elementary School Library. Rebecca has spent countless hours and donated materials to update our library, and she's also involved in the Southwood parents in her efforts. Thank you, Mr. Cittadino. Um, it's a pleasure to be standing before you this evening. Um, I'm joined at the podium with Mrs. Rebecca Jaeger, who's the school librarian at Southwood School and Mr. Rocco Celentano, who is our English language arts supervisor, who does work closely with the school librarians. Um, we were fortunate enough to have Mrs. Jaeger join us at Southwood Elementary School this year after working at Carl Sandburg Middle School for more than eight years. Um, she has been such a welcome addition to our staff for all the wonderful things that she's done for the students and children and, and staff at Southwood School. Um, for those of you who have had the opportunity to be in an elementary school library, uh, you may know that it's a very daunting task to get our library uh, where we'd like it to be with the most updated books and resources. And Mrs. Jaeger has done a phenomenal job. Uh, she's worked tirelessly since the beginning of September, uh, before and after school hours, and also um, just her own time, money, efforts, um, and donations uh, to really help bring our school library into the 21st century. Outside of school, Mrs. Jaeger also works for the Ocean County Library System, um, specifically in Toms River, and she's, able been, uh, she's been able to work with them in terms of getting more resources for our school. In addition, uh, we're also using our smart board um, as part of our library science curriculum, as well as iPads, and incidentally, uh, Mrs. Jaeger was one of the coordinators of our Read Across America celebration. Um, she was very instrumental in leading our students in reading more than 2,500 hours for our Read Across America challenge. Um, and I might add that she came up with the challenge for the principal, uh, which was a jello plunge. So since our children were able to uh, meet those hours, uh, the principal did have a jello plunge. And uh, thank you, Mrs. Jaeger. And she did plan uh, just beautiful festivities for Literacy Luau at Southwood School. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Central Administration and board members who were able to join us for this celebration. So I thank you, Mrs. Jaeger, for everything you've done for Southwood School. Uh, Mrs. Jaeger is a very humble person. I know she doesn't like the spotlight. So I do thank you for accepting this recognition. Thank you. Ms. Keeler, please join us at the dais. Move the Board of Education to recognize Senor Steven Laparuta, Oldbridge High School teacher of Italian, for being a recipient of the special award from the Italian consulate in New York City. Senor Laparuta received his high honor for his hard work and has demonstrated a promotion of the Italian language and culture, and specifically for his role he played in increasing advanced placement enrollment and participation. Albert High School District is proud to offer one of the largest Italian programs in the state. We thank Senor Lapruta for his dedication and enthusiasm. Thank you, Mr. Cittadino. Thank you, Board of Education. Good evening to everybody. Thank you, Senor Laperuta. Thank you, Ms. Kibler, for joining us up here. Uh, my name is Ms. Keeler. A few years ago, the AP enrollment in Oldbridge was approximately 30, 32 students. This year, the AP enrollment boasts over 45 students in two different sections. 
Similarly, two years ago, we had about four sections of level three, an important level for students who are at a crossroads deciding whether or not to continue their lang language study at higher levels. This year, we have six sections of level three, with a large percentage of them indicating their intent to continue into the challenging AP levels. I'm not saying Senor La, as his students lovingly refer to him, has done this on his own. We all know it takes a village, and we have dedicated colleagues with whom Senor La Peruta works. But I am saying that I believe he's a driving force. Senor La Peruta didn't do any of this for the numbers or simply to increase enrollment. When one walks into Senor La Peruta's room, he is surrounded by passion, dedication, true enthusiasm for the language and culture of Italy. What amazes me even more about Senor La Peruta's classes is the sparkle that I have personally witnessed in his students' eyes. They're there because they want to be there, not because they have to. They don't use his classes as a space filler. His students describe, describe him as bright, engaging, fun, enthusiastic, and a little crazy, which is par for the course if ever you were a world language teacher like myself. It didn't take long, it didn't take Oldbridge too long to recognize his talents as he has proven them on numerous occasions. And it's only fitting that others have followed suit. With that being said, the Italian consulate of New York City has recognized the same abilities that we saw and is awarding Senor La Peruta with a much deserved award for his hard work raising the bar and challenging his students, specifically with the award that Mr. Cittadino mentioned before. So Senor La Peruta, it is with honor and pride that I award you this certificate along with Ms. Kibler. Thank you for everything you've done for our students. Congratulations, Mr. La Peruta. We're so very, very proud of you and congratulate you on your efforts. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. All right, we're back now to the live feed. <laughs> For those of you who are watching a, a, a child wedding that was going on on the TV, it was very good. Uh, Mr. LaFruta had nothing to do with that. Of all the wonderful things he does do in the district, he does not uh, oversee those ceremonies. Thank you very much, Ms. Kibler. And uh, Ms. Keeler, and of course, Mr. La Pruta. Okay, at this, this time, can we have a motion to approve the donation, which was added to the agenda as, as um, 3A. Uh, thank you very much for the generous donation from the Elks. And for the agenda recognition items one through five. Is there anyone that would make a motion? Personally, we'll make that motion. So moved, Mr. Weber, thank you. Second? Dunn will second, second the motion. Dunn, okay, Mr. Dunn. Ms. Hoffman, flip a coin. We have two. Roll call, Mr. Mara. Deprima. Yes. Dunn. Yes. Hoffman. Yes. Mongan. Yes. Singh. Yes. Silikowski. Yes. Weber. Yes. Borsilli. Yes. Andriani. Yes. Motions pass. Thank you. At this point, we have the student representative to the board. Um, Mr. Simone, the last time after recognition, everybody left, and we were going to try and hold the audience here, and maybe we'll move you to the right after the Pledge of Allegiance so that w you can talk to s students. But it's your turn. Thank you. Thank you, and good evening. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to talk about the uh, polar plunge and the freeze out, which took place on February 21st and 22nd. Uh, although this passed already, I just want to recognize Overch High School and the entire Overch community for raising over $8,000 for the New Jersey Special Olympics program and Overch High School Special Olympics program also. Uh, the peer leadership program ran this freeze out and it included daytime activities and then we took bus rides down to Seaside Heights and we dove into the Atlantic Ocean and plunged along with thousands and thousands of other people uh, raising money for the New Jersey Special Olympics programs. We raised over $8,000 as a whole. Over $5,000 of that went to New Jersey Special Olympics program, which will be hosted in New Jersey this year. The remaining money will be donated to Old Bridge Township Special Needs programs to uh, help out our special needs students with athletics that they do and the Special Olympics programs we do in our township itself. Uh, the HESPA was the first week of March, and it went very smoothly. Juniors took the HESPA, and freshmen, sophomores, and seniors came in on a delayed opening schedule. We had some activities, uh, a mini senior week, as we like to call it, 
because due to the new HESPA scheduling this year, the seniors traditional senior week got cut short. So we had activities going on on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in the auditorium. We had karaoke, a senior talent show, and um, something else that I don't remember. Um, going into sports, uh, this past Sunday at the New Balance Indoor Nationals, uh, four of my teammates ran nationals at the Armory Track and Field in New York City. They did something extremely extraordinary that I couldn't even ever imagine one of my teammates ever doing. They broke a county record and a school record, placed second in the nation for the 4x400 meter relay, and they were awarded the title All-American. These four athletes, seniors Alex Leto and Marcus Hernandez, juniors Jason Gilbert and Hazem Miawad, ran a time of 316.48. Although a lot of people don't follow track and field or know what those numbers mean, that's incredible. That's at a high school level for 16, 17, and eight year old boys, that's flying to be on an indoor track, to run at the New Balance National Games indoors and be able to achieve a count, Middlesex County record, a school record, and be behind uh, Union Catholic was the first team. Um, that time is 15th US all time that Old Bridge ran and fifth all time for New Jersey. So it just goes to show how much of a powerhouse New Jersey track and field really is that we got beat out for the Nationals by a team from New Jersey and fifth all time for New Jersey out of the top 15 in the country. Uh, moving on to the spring musical it will be the spring musical nine to five will take place on March 28th, 29th and 30th. It's uh, 7 p.m. for the 28th, 29th and it's a daytime show for on the 30th. Oldbridge High School's The Voice competition is taking place April 3rd, where student contestants sing uh, and for administrative teams, there's Team Fazio, Team Mazur, Team Oliveri, and Team Sasso. They pick student contestants and they sing for them and we vote on it and it's a competition and it kind of mirrors how The Voice is uh, on TV, so it's really interesting. Spring, store, spring sports are underway. Uh, teams are already started scrimmaging and everything so far everything's looking really Everything's looking like it's going really well for them. We have the new field for the baseball and lacrosse is practicing and playing on Lombardi. Uh, an exciting time for Oldbridge High School is right now because Battle of the Classes is starting to be, is starting. We are uh, bringing back the faculty dodgeball tournament, which will take place the first night of Battle of the Classes on April 10th. Um, faculty members of Oldbridge High School will, take, will participate in a faculty dodgeball tournament. This tournament is going to be run by the Peer Leadership Program and the Student Senate. And what this tournament is going to do is raise money for senior scholarships and the Peer Leadership Program. And faculty members are gonna make teams by their, either de their department or their just any colleagues. And they're gonna play against each other in a tournament that night. And that's gonna be the first night of the Battle of the Classes. It's gonna be the two days before our the Thursday and Friday before our spring recess. So that's April 10th and April 11th. And we're really excited for the daytime activities for battle of classes and that faculty dodgeball tournament at night. So I think that's just about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Simone. Mrs. Andriani, yes. before we go on, can I just say something about Chris? We might, yes. Uh, Chris is here every month telling us what's going on at school, but also Chris is a, a, an excellent student. We had the honor of attending about two weeks ago Student and his classmate John Shamus were recognized by New Jersey State Board of it, um, New Jersey State Board. I forgot the title of what you were recognized for, but it was a great honor for Chris and John Shamus, and congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Cittadino can fill in the rest of that information for you. It's quite all right. Um, I did my notes here. Let me just bring back my notes. <laughs> Um, uh, John Shamos and Chris Simone were celebrated for at the 29th annual uh, New Jersey School Administrators Association and School uh, Boards Association Student of the Year. Uh, they're recognized for their contributions and overcoming obstacles and just being uh, positive members of their class. So it was great to be there with him and his, uh, his mom and uh, the Shamos family as well and a real honor to be there celebrating the terrific students from Oldbridge. And it should be noted that um, I believe Mr. Simone is also going to be a, another bison. Uh, he was accepted to Bucknell University for his prowess in academics and athletics. 
Congratulations, Mr. Smith. Thank you very much. All right, I just have a few items for superintendent's report, and then we'll go into progress towards goals. Um, one of the things that we strived in our goals that will be adopted tonight is increase our communication. To do so, we've brought back two members, uh, two components that allow the superintendent to get out and meet with the parents and the stakeholders in the community, and that's the superintendent's advisory council and the superintendent's forum. Uh, we've had uh, two advisory councils and one forum since January, and at that time, we, we did things by looking over our goals and reviewing the goals and wh where we stand with that and uh, how better we can serve the community and our students. One of the goals that are, are on there tonight is to talk about uh, is to improve our student and school security. And I just wanted to share something that will also tie into uh, correspondence. So I'll take it all, take the, all under uh, superintendent's report. I received correspondence from uh, Captain Weiss of the Oldbridge Police Department and to show how effective our camera system at our, our schools has been working. Since January um, and to going into March, there were 10 cases of vandalism with paint guns uh, in the area of Lawrence Harbor. And there was 10 houses that were vandalized. Well, a school security camera was able to pick up the assailants and an arrest was made due to the dedication of the work of Detectives Meacham and Karslowski. So I want to comment, com commend them for their hard work and then just show how the, those cameras can go above and beyond just the school security and also help out in the community. So that was something I wanted to share with the board. Um, and also to bring in some communication that we've had from the public. One is about a, one of our guidance counselors at the high school, uh, Ms. Voorhees. Uh, Christy Voorhees is my daughter Lauren's high school guidance counselor and she was assi assigned to Lauren in the beginning of last year. I cannot say enough good things about her and what a terrific job she's been doing. She is kind, considerate, thoughtful, concerned, and knowledgeable, and very efficient. We could not be happier with having Ms. Voorhees as part of Lauren's education. And that was from Ms. Kathy Salvinson. Again, I received permission from these parents uh, in order to recognize uh, members of our, our staff at a public meeting. Additionally, we received correspondence from uh, Deborah Long, and she could not sp speak highly enough about our parent university the other night and the CPR and AED course that was offered, and that our uh, Miss Baker, um, who headed up a lot of the AED training there with her staff, did a wonderful job in providing professional AED training, and they felt it was really a tremendous asset to the members of the community to have that training so they can not only look out for their family, but their friends in the community as well when they're out and about. So I wanted to commend uh, Ms. Kibler and everyone who put that training together, uh, as well as um, Dr. Ogoli as well. And lastly, I have a, a parent letter from uh, a Ms. Casella, and she was just saying what a wonderful job uh, Ms. Timon did at Carpenter School filling in while the um, regular teacher was out, uh, unable to perform her duties. This teacher came in and was able to take care of the education of her child and the, the emotional care of her child without missing a beat. So I wanted to commend Ms. Timon for coming in as an LTS and helping us as well. Uh, as we head into progress towards goals, I've asked that uh, Mr. McHugh join us and come to the dais. Mr. McHugh, if you do not know this, is our district anti-bullying coordinator. If you reach into your packet, board members, this is board member information only, you'll see a sheet in there that provides you with very small but accurate numbers about the self-assessment process for the HIB, uh, which is a state-mandated self-scoring process. And I've asked Mr. McHugh to come here and to speak about how these scores were arrived at and where people and the public can find them now. Mr. McHugh? Good evening. Board of Education, Mr. Cittadino. At the end of the last school year, the state of New Jersey asked that all schools complete a self-assessment. And what they wanted us to do was look at from January of 2011 till June of 2013, they wanted us to assess our schools to see how well we were implementing the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights Act. There was 25 questions. Now each question was given a point total of up to three points. If you weren't doing what the question asked, you could receive the zero. One, you put down one if you had partially met the requirements. Two means you met the requirements. And if you put a three down next to the question, that means you exceeded the requirements from the state. 
In order to pass from the state, you needed a 50 or better. And I'm happy to stand up here today and say that all of our schools not only met, but they exceeded uh, the standards uh, for making sure that we implemented the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights Act here. Now, this is based out of 75 points. So our scores are now posted on the district website and each individual school website. And if you go to our website, you will see a link on the left-hand side that says HIB self-assessment. The district homepage has the district's overall score, which is a combination of all 15 schools added up and divided and came to a score, as well as if you click on the button on the bottom, you will see each individual school's and score, and that was provided by the state. Now, each website has just the school score and the district score. Uh, so you can go back and forth to each website, and that's what the state asked us to do, which we put on our websites today here. I will tell you that our district overall score was 65 out of, out of 75, which is very good. Uh, when I met with other anti-bullying coordinators from the area, uh, schools here in our, in our district, you know, when you put down a two or a three, it's, it's hard. And it's, is it a three, is it a two or not? And I think this year everybody just was a little bit conservative, so we put two instead of three down here. But what this score is saying is that we are 15 points higher than what the state wanted us to do, which was a minimum of 50, uh, 50 a score of here. Uh, we are required to do the same self-assessment again in, at the end of the school year. I will be back up here in June just to make the public aware of that as well as the Board of Education for that. I just want to take a moment just to kind of highlight some of the programs here. I mean, each day uh, our schools are doing various programs here, whether it's assemblies, show, character education lessons here. And there's three of them I just really wanted to highlight here. Um, I always like when our, our older students come down and work with our younger students here. And I have to really say that our peer leadership program in the high school has done a phenomenal job. They come down to our elementary schools five times a year. They've been working with our fifth grade students and our fifth grade students enjoy that, that interaction where they talk about, you know, self, just about respect and self-image. And the focus this year has been a, a lot on cyberbullying. And they've really hit home with our students here. Our ROTC program came to visit Carpenter Elementary School the other day, and they put six different stations on that our students rotated through, um, whether it was a game or whether it was an interactive lesson or whether it was a skit, and our students really, really enjoyed that here. And the last program that I'd like to talk to you was about our middle school program, and that's in eighth grade. They offered a challenge program, and that was in December. It was so powerful. Everybody that participated in the program learned about Every, each other, all the different students in the school, and there was not a dry eye during the whole entire time here. It was so powerful that these schools have also wanted to continue this and started clubs. And over at Sandberg Middle School, uh, they have a club now called Be the Challenge Club. Uh, Be the Change Club, I'm sorry. And I just heard from one of their vice principals, uh, Dr. Londrigan, that the students in that club spent uh, this afternoon going through the entire sixth grade hallway upstairs putting positive sticky notes on all 350 sixth grade students lockers so that tomorrow when they walk in that school on everybody's locker they will see something positive on there and that's just to show you the, the many many programs uh, many of our schools have been honored as state schools of character and tomorrow I know eight of our schools are going to Ryder University uh, to be re rewarded for for being either state schools of character or receiving honorable mention, and I know some of our schools are up for national uh, state of schools of character here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McHugh. Thank you, Mr. Sidney. I have none at this time, Mr. Mayor. Oh, I have. So, special committee reports, Mr. Dunn. Yes, good evening. On Thursday, March 6th, we had a Buildings and Grounds and Transportation Committee meeting, and it was well attended by the public, and we discussed a lot of the things that are going on in the district. Uh, one in, in particular I want to point out is we have a young lady called, named Julia Davis from Sandberg School. Uh, she's been working on an endeavor to get quality water within our school system, and she came and gave us a wonderful presentation and uh, giving us some, uh, giving the committee some ideas on how she wants to approach the schools to make sure that each student has clean and enjoyable water. And she did a wonderful job. She's been an activist 
uh, in this district for, for, for a few years now concerning getting fresh water and she came to the committee meeting and gave a wonderful presentation on getting uh, new water coolers installed in the schools and also distributing uh, collapsible cups. This entrepreneur approach by one of our students is wonderful. It's a testament to what, we're, what we are teaching and instilling in our children and, 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 and she's leading by example and it's, and it's refreshing. Uh, and the uh, Board of Education is working with Ms. Davis and, 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 and Sandberg School with, uh, with Frank Vizita to make sure we start changing out some more water coolers, putting it into the budget and, and moving forward. So job well done, Julia. Keep up the hard work and we much appreciate your, 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 your persistence. Secondly, we discussed uh, security improvements in the district. It's all going well. Uh, we had a very kind comment this evening from, from uh, Mr. Sedadino concerning the security cameras, which they have helped solve some issues outside the perimeter of the schools. Um, the access controls are pretty much done as well, and, we're moving, and we are moving forward with a couple other uh, programs. But I'm very happy to say that our security in our schools, I believe, is, is the finest. And there's been a lot of things that have been, that have been going on in the world, and I can safely say that we've done a very good job. I have uh, you know, some experience because I have two children in the district and I have a wife who teaches in the district and I feel very secure with them being here. And I think that this administration and, 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 and the Board of Education, the police department uh, have done a wonderful job to ensure the safety of our children. Uh, we have many new projects going on right now in the district uh, and we're working to make sure that they get finished uh, timely uh, and uh, before the, newest, new, the start of the new school year come 2014, 2015. Another big uh, discussion during our, our, our meeting was the implementation of full day kindergarten. Uh, as we all know, the Department of Education has approved full day kindergarten for our district and now we need to start accelerating the uh, improvements to certain facilities to ensure that uh, we are ready to deliver our promise to the public for September. So we, we spoke about that as well. And we were fortunate at the committee to see the improvements that were going to be made at the Rotunda over at Southwood School, which is going to house our, um, our uh, pre-K uh, pre uh, special needs program. Uh, fabulous, fabulous improvements, and, and, and that's going to be a worthwhile um, facility for our children. And we got into other uh, conversations about signage and parking lot issues at Cooper School and also Shira School. And then we went into the transportation aspect, and there was discussion concerning Code Blue, Code Blue is a, 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 uh, an order for our school buses to stop when there is inclement weather or hazardous conditions on the roads. And we got into a discussion about the use of Code Blue because that has other meanings as well in the first responder world. So that's something which the administration is going to work with Transportation Director Denise Capasso to, uh, to work out and, and get a new, 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 new uh, order. Also, we discussed about uh, the delayed opening of the uh, high schools during the HESPER exams. It seemed that uh, our students got some misinformation that it was going to be a delayed opening and it would be uh, a two-hour delayed opening. And unfortunately, it, it, it was probably a 20-minute delay and having kids outside two hours before, I'm sorry, uh, two hours and be waiting out, you know, 20 minutes additional for the school buses during very cold weather was a problem. But the administration took care of that by sending out a real time to inform everyone that there was uh, a glitch and that it was actually not a delayed opening but actually 20 minutes later than a delayed opening. So that, was wor that worked out well and they're going to do everything in their power in the future to make sure that that information gets out quicker. But overall, we had a successful evening. It was well attended by board members and also the public and, and it's refreshing to see committee meetings working so well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Anyone else? Yeah, yeah Mr. Andriani. Uh, okay, hold on oh. a second. Mr. Weber? Yeah. Uh, we met since the uh, last meeting, and uh, just by way of uh, a little bit of historical background for those people who may not know me, um, I spent about 15 years on long-range planning as either a board member or a private citizen from 1986 to leading up to the referendum in 2001, and during that period, um, I did the demographics for that committee. Certainly when we move forward toward the referendum, a professional demographer was hired, as I would encourage the board and the district to do now as well. Um, what we have currently in Old Bridge are a high school that has two buildings on a single campus in the grade 9 center and the 10, 11, and 12 building, two separate middle schools and 12 elementary schools. The focus of uh, what we did primarily is uh, at the 
looked at is at the elementary level because that's where um, probably the, the strongest look needs to be taken at the use of the facilities, not so much just specifically today, uh, particularly with the implementation of the new kindergarten, but over the next five years. Uh, in the last 15 years, the elementary enrollment grades K through 5 has dropped 826 students, which is about an 18 percent drop across those 12 buildings. Now, during that same period of time, in conjunction with that, 20, approximately 22 new classrooms, the equivalent of another school, was added by expansion to the existing 12 buildings uh, as, as a result of the 2001 uh, referendum. Uh, so I would encourage the board to, uh, number one, actively go out and get a demographer to look at where we are now and where we'll be in the next five years, and we'll, I'll give you where I think that projection is. Uh, and look at ways of uh, providing economies, particularly at the elementary level, whether that's through consolidation, additions on some buildings to make them more efficient, whatever the, whatever the board chooses, because we're, we're going into a very tough economic time, and it's going to continue. Uh, my expectation is that in the next five years, given what the current economy is and what the housing is in Albridge, uh, we're going to lose, in spite of the full day kindergarten, we're going to lose another 300 students at the elementary, about 300 at the middle school level, and uh, another 250 or so at the high school level, another 856 or so students. So I would encourage the, the district to go out and hire a professional demographer. Don't believe me, because Annette already doesn't. Uh, go out and hire a professional demographer and let, let them do it and, and come back and tell you so you know where you're going. I mean. They'll only let you go five years out, generally, and uh, Joe, if I'm correct, that's as far as the state will let you five years out. So I would have them take a look at the next five years. So you, you know where you've been, you know where you are, and you need to know where you're going and how you're going to uh, be able to fund it, especially with softer revenues over the next five years. Thank you, Mr. Weber. Um, after all the discussion we've had about um, decreasing enrollment and uh, different sections of town, that's the first time I've heard anybody mention a professional demographer. So um, that might be something that we need to consider. We, we always keep, we keep talking about what we were going, we're going to do. We need professional advice. So um, Mr. Sabino, next time you have administrative team meeting, if you could at least ferret out some information for that and we'll see where it goes. Thank you, Mr. Weber. Mr. Vercilli, you next? Thank sure, you. yes. Um, so. We've had a number of uh, finance committee meetings. Um, there is a proposed budget on tonight's agenda, which will be voted on by the board. Um, our last uh, meeting was um, the 6th, was it? I believe it was, or the 7th? Well, March 10th. It was on March 10th. Um, and at, at that time, we had received the, uh, the state aid figures. Um, and the state uh, came in about $200,000 higher than they had last year. Um, so that was certainly good news. Um, one thing that the, the board did make clear to central administration was that there were a number of initiatives that we wanted to make sure we got through and were included in the budget, um, being full day kindergarten and some improvements to the buildings, and they are included in that budget. Um, I thank Mr. Mara and his team um, for working very uh, diligently on that budget. Um, it's, it's always an arduous task um, to put one of those budgets together. Um, so I know that they, they have put a lot of time into it. Um, we, it is proposed at a 2% rate increase to the, to the uh, taxpayer. Um, so I'll give some commentary on that when it's time to vote. Um, but just as far as the committee report, um, that's where we stand with that. It will be voted on by the board tonight, and uh, there will be a public hearing, which is also on the budget uh, for May 6th. Thank you, Mr. Priscilli. Uh, Mr. DeFrimo? Yes, thanks. Um, I scheduled a food service slash athletic complex athletic complex event committee meeting for March 26, 7 p.m. in the admin building conference room. And uh, I don't know if everybody knows, but I'm also the PTA president's council liaison. And if you remember last month, Mrs. Callie was here talking about the multi-school district fundraiser at Friendlies for Mike Nichols, the Monroe hockey player that was injured. She asked me to read a message in her absence. She apologizes for not being here. Um, Jill Callie has asked me to thank all the PTAs and everyone else who participated in the President's Council fundraiser earlier this month at Friendlies for Mikey Nichols. 
Jill has been told by friend that Friendlies will be sending out a check for $575, a uh, check to pray for Mikey. So thank you to everybody that participated. Um, good luck to Mikey. Thank you. Anything else? Any other? Mr. Silikowski? Like oh, sorry. I would just like to announce that we will be having an athletics meeting. Visual, it's athletics, visual arts, and health on March 31st at 7 o'clock for anyone who wishes to come. And I'll hold all my other comments till the end. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hartman. On this side, anybody else? Okay, going this way. Mr. Yes, so uh, we have a meeting coming up Monday, uh, Curriculum and Technology. <coughs> and I'm also working on a, a policy meeting I haven't come up with the date on that, but we're going to be covering security in our school system. Uh, don't forget Monday, be there. It's a very important meeting. Curriculum and technology, 7 o'clock. All right, thank you. Anyone else? No, I guess that will close that section. Mr. Simone, you want to make a graceful exit? Would you like to make a graceful exit now? Okay. All right, um, for the board members who are at facility use, uh, the board needs to acknowledge the schedule, not necessarily approve it, but we have to vote on acknowledgement. Yes, no motion. Good, here we go. Hearing of residents, agenda items only. No, yes, I see movement, no. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> we have no action on policy, athletics. One and two. Do I have a motion? That will make a motion. Athletics items one and two. Mr. Thank President. you, Mr. Dunn. Do I have a second? second. Thank you, Ms. Hopman. Mr. Mara. Oh, I don't believe so. Oh, Mr. Mara. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Porcilli? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Andriani? Yes. Motions pass. Thank you. Curriculum goes from number 1 to 13. May I have a motion? I will move curriculum. Mr. Silikowski will move. May I have a second? Borsilli will second. Thank you, Mr. Borsilli. Any discussion? No? Okay. Roll call, Mr. Mara. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Porcilli? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Andriani? Yes. Motions pass. Thank you. All right. Next up is finance from numbers 1 through 13. This will exclude number seven, which we had moved into the recognition portion. May I have a motion? Um, Ms. Andriani, I'd like to um, separate number 12. I think we need to have a motion first. And place a motion first. Let's place the motion first. Okay. Mr. Basili? Sure, I'll make that motion. All right, Mr. Basili will uh, motion. Do I have a second? Mongan will second. Thank you, Ms. Mongan. Now discussion and any separation? Yes, separate number 12. Number so 12? Discussion? Yes. Okay. We're going to separate number 12 for discussion and voting? Yes. Okay. We're going to separate number 12. Any other separations? No? Okay. Discussion? Mr. Rossilli, number 12. Yeah. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I chaired the, the Finance Committee, uh, and uh, I thank Mr. Mara and his team for doing such a terrific job putting this, this budget together. Um, I know it wasn't easy. Um, it is a 2% increase to the taxpayer. Um, I am going to be voting no on this. Um, I just think that asking the taxpayer for 2% after asking them for th approximately 3.7% last year is just a, a, a very difficult thing to ask them for at this time. Um, I approve of everything that's in this budget. I certainly want to ensure that everything that we've asked to be included, such as full day kindergarten and the improvements to the buildings, uh, get completed. Uh, I still believe that we can, we can get all of that into a budget and have less than 2%. Um, I came into this process hoping for about half of that. Um, so I, I, 
I have a difficult time. I think that if this actually went to the voter, I, I don't know how, how, how this would go through. Um, um, there are just too many people in this township that are having very difficult financial times. I know very many people that are either unemployed or def certainly underemployed, making much, much less. Um, many people have not seen raises in four or five years. Um, some people have taken pay cuts in the past number of years. Um, the cost of everything continues to go up, uh, so I, I think it's very difficult. I know it's, you know, as it's described, it's, it's they explain it as 2% to the typical homeowner is a, about 90 something dollars, I believe it was. Um, but I think that year over year, you know, $100, $100, $100 uh, becomes quite difficult on, on many of our families in this township. So uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to say no on this one. Okay, thank you for your comments, Mr. Basili. Anyone else? Yeah, Mr. I have a, just a couple of questions for either the attorney and or Mr. Mara. Um, should there not be enough votes to send this up to the county, to, or l let me rephrase. If this goes up to the county tonight, the five votes are there and it, and it gets approved to go up to the county, uh, the board still has the ability to work on reducing the amount of the increase between now and the 16th of May, is that correct? No, <coughs> the process is that tonight you're voting on a preliminary budget that is submitted uh, to the, su the county superintendent for approval. Uh, once he signs off on it, we do a public hearing uh, on May 6th, but really the opportunity to change it at this point after tonight is, I believe it's not possible, correct? No, there can be reductions. It would be subject to review by the county superintendent. It would be possible, though, to reduce the, the overall budget number that you've struck tonight, if assuming the board supports it tonight. Uh, however, it is a very difficult process, and it's not one that the county likes to entertain, frankly. So it would ha if there were changes during the period between the 20th and the 6th, it would have to be resubmitted to the county superintendent for approval again. All right. Um, I, like Mr. Uh, Borsilli, was intending not to uh, vote for this tonight for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, I want to compliment Mr. Mayor on his preparation, and it's uh, nothing to do with his preparation or the the ability that got us to the 2 percent, but just because the 2 percent cap is there, I don't necessarily think that given last year's tax increase and given the fact that uh, when uh, the full-day kindergarten was approved, uh, we were assured by the proponents of it that it was going to be mandated by the state and funded by the state, neither of those things happened, um, which has us, the Old Bridge taxpayer, funding $1.37 million, which is a substantial part of the 2 percent increase. Uh, however, being pragmatic, I will vote yes so it can go to the county, but I would like to see action taken between now and May to bring the number to, uh, further down. Uh, I mean, I think if we're forced to share a lot of pain for a decision uh, that was based on whatever it was based on uh, to approve the full-day kindergarten without having proper funding, um, you know, I, I, I want, I'd like to see an improvement. Thank you, Mr. Weber. Anybody else? Any comments? Mr. Dunn? Mrs. President, thank you. First, I would like to say that this budget is fair, it is well-rounded and appropriate for the school district. I know there's proponents on the school board who believe that we're asking the taxpayers for more money every year to fund education. But we need to remember that education is extremely important to the welfare of our children. A community has an obligation to give the children the finest start in life and education. And if we fail as a group to promote that, then I have a problem with this Board of Education. I understand that we are the stewards of the money for the taxpayers and we need to be fair and equitable. But we have our job, and our job first is to give the finest education, and we must continue that endeavor. And I believe, based upon what I've seen in the budget, everything is there to continue the programs. There's a lot of initiatives in that budget that's going to make this a better district, and that's the goal in life is to give our children the fairest and best start in life. And we as a community owe it to them. Yes, we can be a little bit more diligent. We can be a little bit more careful with the taxpayers' funds. But honestly, what I've seen in that budget of 2%, I think it's a well-rounded, well-constructed, and proper budget for this district. 
full day kindergarten, a very, very worthwhile endeavor. And we've been fighting to get it done, and it is done. And 2% is not a lot of money. I know that we have some uh, board members here who believe 2% is a lot of money. In grand scheme of things, 75 or $80 or $86 is a, a substantial amount of money. But in the grand scheme of things, to keep this district well run, keep the programs in place that we have, it's a very small uh, tax levy. Our security, excellent. We, our children are safe. We have safe schools. We have all different resources put in place to ensure the safety and well-being of our children. That's part of this increase. Kindergarten is part of this increase. Improvements to our facilities are part of this increase. So in my eyes, I think it's a well worth uh, increase. I think it's going to benefit us in the long run. It's going to help our home values. There's a lot of positive things in this budget, and I will vote yes. And I'm encouraging all my fellow board members to vote yes, because we have an obligation to the children. We have our duty, and the duty first is to give the greatest and proper education for our children. Thank you. A uh, question Mr. for the attorney. Are all board members eligible to vote on this budget? Yes. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Ms. Mungin? Yes, I would. <clears throat> Excuse me. I would just like to comment on the budget also. Um, a 2% increase this year, um, as was brought out in the three finance committee meetings we, we had um, to discuss it. 2% uh, this year, 3.68 last year, but there was a 1.24% decrease in 2012-13. And um, that is why last year's tax rate was not the impact that this year's tax rate will be, $93.88 for the average homeowner of a home assessed at $152,700, because the tax rate is based on a calendar year, January to December, and the school district budgets are fiscal years, July through June. So last year, even though we had the 3.6% increase to cover the costs of majority of the costs are really the staffing to staff the schools and the benefits it the impact dollar wise was mitigated by the fact that half of that increase was offset by the prior year's decrease unfortunately this two percent increase equates to 9388 because half of it comes from the increase last year which represented a large increase of staff which the board has turned around and really been uh, watching and uh, not adding staff, just replacing staff. But um, the majority of the tax levy increase is for full day kindergarten, which the last meeting that was the most heavily attended by parents in September at the high school auditorium, they voiced their concern one after another going up to the podium that they wanted full day kindergarten. And since that is the majority of the cost, and um, another small portion of the cost is for security, and unfortunately that's a decision that, that, that ha came about as of December of 2012. For every district, you have to beef up your security and keep your students safe. So most of the cost is the full day kindergarten security, and for maintaining our large contingent of 12 elementary schools plus Glen School, plus the, the two middle schools and high school. And um, it, nobody likes to see an increase. And based on the fact that all the costs go up and the state aid went up $200,000, I think that I will be supporting this budget and um, it, it's as fair as we can get right now. But if there were any means to possibly reduce the tax levy, maybe by lease purchasing some other capital improvement or whatever, I'm sure that that could be discussed and the budget could be adjusted for the public hearing as it has been in the past. But I will be supporting the budget tonight. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Mungin. Ms. Sorokowski, since we're at this side of the table. I will be supporting the budget tonight and uh, I will echo Frank Weber and uh, Kevin Borselli's uh, words that I think we should l really look at it between now and uh, May when we actually f finally vote on the budget. But tonight I will support it to bring it over to the county superintendent for approval. Thank you, Mr. Sikowski. Mr. Singh? I will be voting uh, no because, um, first of all, I want to say, you know, 
the hard work that uh, Mr. Mara did and financial committee did, that was great. It's a well-crafted budget. But uh, looking when, when I'm driving through the communities, I see for sale signs, I see houses empty. I think $75 is $75, and it, it's an increase. So th there are a lot of variables that we can look at, look at and explore the possibilities of doing something there. So I, I, I fully support kindergarten. We should do that, and uh, we should really look at 2% raise in taxes again and uh, do something about it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Singh. On this side, we've heard Mr. Basili. We've heard from you, Mr. Dupree. Yeah, I have a question, then a comment, please. Um, this is the question is for council, um, Mr. Paul, and Earlier, I think you said that once we adopt this tonight, assuming we do, that we couldn't make changes. But Mr. Weber alluded to that. Let's try between now and May six to lessen it, and I thought it sounded like that was possible. <laughs> I'm not, no. It it is possible, Mr. Dupree. You can tighten between now and the budget presentation, the budget hearing, and the final adoption. However, that would require it going back up to the county executive superintendent. So it is possible. It's a difficult process, and it's one that Mr. Mayor would have to engineer very carefully and rather quickly. But uh, it is not impossible. Okay, because I thought Mr. Weber, uh, again, alluded that it would, if he was going to say yes based on us trying to tighten it up between now and then. Am I, did I miss something? Or? Well, no. I, uh, since there are no conflicts, I'm going to vote now at this point. So. Okay. Okay, well, that was my question. So uh, it would, it can be done, but it would take a lot of doing. Is that That's correct? Okay. Um, comments. I, I'm, I came here tonight very torn on what to do, to be honest with everybody. Um, our first obligation, obviously, is to the students of Oldbridge. I think our second responsibility is to the community of Oldbridge being fiscally responsible. Uh, when Mr. Borsilli read the Code of Ethics tonight, though, it, it says every board member will make decisions in terms of the educational welfare of children and so on and so on. I, I guess that goes back to my first responsibility of being here. Um, as mentioned by Mr. Cittadino and many others, the security system, which is, is in pretty much in place and bar none a very good system, is taken a part of this also. The kindergarten, which I voted yes for a few months ago based on public uh, I don't want to say outcry, but public support. I pretty much did what the people were asking for. So that's a, that's a good part of the budget also. Um, I, I would like to see it lower because uh, one of the things when I said I, I was running for the board was I was going to try and find ways of saving money, and apparently um, we're not doing that. Uh, I, I'd like to see something between now and May 6th, but if it's, if it's uh, a big process. I don't know if that's going to actually happen. Uh, I guess that's it on my comments. Okay, Mr. DePrima, thank you. Ms. Hoffman, would you like to? Yes. Um, I just want to comment on the fact that, first of all, I think what the, the budget being put together the way it was by Mr. Mara and explain to the board, okay, um, is probably the first time in a very long time, okay, that I could actually walk out of the room understanding everything. And I thank you for that, okay? And I, I look forward to the presentation to the public so that they can understand everything that has gone on with this budget, the process, and everything that Mr. Mara has put together so that they could also understand walking away why there would be an increase. And the 1%, correct me if I'm wrong, out of the 2%, it will be going towards the kindergarten, which when the kindergarten was voted on, which goes back quite a few years, as a matter of fact, the beginning of looking into full-day kindergarten was when Pat Torrey was the superintendent of schools. That's how far back we went. And we were never able to be bringing it into the district because we either didn't have the money or there were other reasons in which it didn't happen. All right. This was the year that we decided to do it was last year when this board voted to put it in based on, yes, all of the responses from the public that we needed a full-day kindergarten. It will work in conjunction with our preschool program. 
we have a full day preschool program and then we have a half day kindergarten and then we have first grade that's full day. It didn't make sense. It certainly is going to be to the advantage of the children. This is what this Board of Education is here for, to make sure that every child in this district is educated. It is also the responsibility of looking at the taxpayer and making sure that everything runs the way it's supposed to. That's what we were elected to be here for. Nobody wants an increase. There have been times where we've had decreases, we've had increases, we've had budgets that have gone forward with no increase, and the public voted it down. So to go and say that, you know, we're not going to do it or we're not going to vote on it because we don't think that the public would accept it, okay, we don't know that for a fact. I do know that putting this full day kindergarten in is probably one of the best things that this district could have done. For us to turn around and try and delete from this budget, where do we take it from? Do we get rid of teachers? Aren't these the people that are in there to educate our children? I know that we have looked over this budget, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Mara, and we have checked everything in accordance to what we were supposed to do. And right now, for us to turn around and to, I would love to see a decrease, but where is that, where would that decrease come from and who at the end would get hurt because of it? I will be voting yes on it. I don't wanna see an increase, but I also know that my job here is to make sure that every child is educated to the best of their ability. And to do that, we have to have a budget, we have to have employees, we have to have everything that we have in progress. And going forward, I am just hoping that the public, whatever questions you may have, come to the meeting that will be open to the public so that this budget can be explained in layman's terms so that everybody understands why that increase was there. Thank you, Mr. Mara, for all the work that you've done on this budget. Thank you, Ms. Hopman. All right, it's my turn. Um, I've been on the, the board now six years. Um, when we moved the elections from April to November, I wound up with an extra half a year in there somewhere, but this is now six budgets. Three of them were zero, no increase at all. One of them, we had to have an increase, and that was the year that the state had some financial issues and we lost several million dollars in state aid. Um, we had had um, a balanced budget ready to go at that point, and uh, Ms. Mongan was involved in that as our BA, and we had to have different scenarios that we would sit and talk about. Well, if we lose this much money, we can do this. If we lose this much money, we could do this. And that was a very tense time for all of us. Some of our employees at that point um, wound up losing some benefits. Nobody was happy about that. And we have since tried to um, replace those benefits and, and do what we needed, and that group was the powers. But again, out of those six years, three were a flat. One was one where we had to increase because of the state budget. Another one, we gave back money to the taxpayers. I don't know if anybody felt it because the township budget had increased at that point. And, the, uh, and we had one raise. So over six years, as far as I can see, we're, we've been pretty balanced. My concern is that we have, uh, we started this process with several large initiatives. One of them was the iPad initiative, and granted that's continuing from last year. And I don't know if everybody understands, but we have new testing procedures that are mandated by the state of New Jersey, and that includes a lot of technology. So not only did we need new computers, whether it was iPads or something else, we needed keyboards, or laptops, fixed and, and upgraded labs, and it wasn't just about the hardware. The state mandates that we use certain software. We have to have the personnel to load all that software. We have to instruct all the children. We have to increase our bandwidth in every school, upgrade our wiring and networking. And that's something that we knew was coming, but had no real clear idea of what the cost was. And today, with the, the state test looming, the state keeps changing what it is that they mandate. So we're, we're walking, every time we turn around and we get information from the state, or central administration gets, gets information from the state, it's all changed. 
and we have to scramble to change that. And there's a cost that goes along with that. Our special needs population is increasing. There's a cost that goes along with that. We have several children now that, um, or an increased amount of children that need a one-on-one -on -one aid. We send children out, out of district, that's extremely expensive. We need to put an aid on those buses. Although we have um, consortium and shared money and um, the, the central administration does their best to try and um, keep those costs at a minimum, but those are rising costs. Utilities, gasoline has gone up. Water and sewer has go up, goes up. And the school system, we have to pay. And I don't know if, if, the, if the public understands that we get a bill for water and sewer. Think about how many toilets get flushed in a school every day. And all that water that goes into the sewer so we get banged on both sides, just as you do in your own home. We've increased our AP course. We've, we've had, we have our challenge courses and our, um, our, our schools of character. We have the languages that have been increased. We have the string program and instrumental music that has increased. We've upgraded our fields that needed to be done for a long period of time. We've, we've now instituted full day kindergarten for six years that I've been on the board, we keep talking about it. We finally put it in motion. We've, we've brought back our late buses so that our students can stay after school for clubs and activities and sports. And we've done all of that and added security. I don't want to see taxes go up either, but I want to maintain the programs that we have. We have a lot of people out there that are champions of the school district, and when something goes wrong, believe us, we all get phone calls. But when something is right, we get those letters and phone calls as well. And we're doing a lot of really good things here. And I, I understand everybody's opinion, and I value what everybody has had to say, but I think that we need to maintain the programs that we have. So I will be voting yes. And Mr. Um, Sandino, that would conclude, I think, all of the board's comments at this point. Okay, so we are now going to have a motion for voting for numbers one through 13. We are omitting, omitting seven and we have separated 12. Okay, so this is one through six, eight through 11 and 13 for voting. May I have a motion? You have a motion. I have a motion. May, roll call, Mr. Mara. Mongan. Yes. Singh. Yes. Solikowski. Yes. Weber. Yes. Porcilli. Yes. DePrima. Yes. Dunn. Yes. Hopman. Yes. Andriani. Yes. So motions one through six, eight, 11, and 13 pass. Thank you, Mr. Mara. So now we will um, vote on number 12. Roll call, Mr. Mara. Mongan. Yes. Singh. Yes. Solikowski. Yes. Weber. No. Orsilli. No. DePrima. I guess I'll go with the yes. Dunn. Yes. Hopman. Yes. Andriani. Yes. Item number 12 passes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. May I have a motion? Mongan will move. Thank you, Ms. Mongan. May I have a second? Hopman will second. Thank you, Ms. Hopman. Mr. Mara, any discussion? I keep wanting to miss that part. No. I would just oh, okay. discussion. I, yes. I would just like to um, recognize Jenny Rosenbaum, who, um, whose retirement is on the agenda for her 22 years of service as a VA. I worked with her and um, a wonderful individual. And um, I'm sorry to see that she has to leave for disability. And um, I just want to thank her for all her years of dedicated service. Thank you. Anyone else discussion? No. Okay, Mr. Singh. Yes. Solikowski. Yes. Weber. Yes. Orsilli. Yes. DePrima. Yes. 
Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Andriani? Yes. Motions pass. Thank you, Mr. Mara. We have nothing for non-certificated personnel operation. We're now into non-certificated personnel other, which is numbers one through 10. May I have a motion? Then we'll make a motion, non-certificated personnel other, items one through 10. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Mr. Weber will second. Mr. Mara, roll call. Oh, any discussion? Okay, Mr. Mara. Sulikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Orsilli? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Andriani? Yes. Motions pass. Thank you. Page 23, page 15, certificated personnel. Numbers 1 through 14. May I have a motion? Thank you, Ms. Hopman. And a second? Dunn will second certificated personnel. Certainly. Number one, may the board approve the retirement of the following staff member with deep appreciation for the years of dedicated service to the district. And the person mentioned is Carol Grant from Carl Sandburg Middle School, special education with 28 years of service. Mr. Weber, do you know the, the person? 28 years, okay. <laughs> Any other discussion? Okay, Mr. Mara. Weber? Yes. Orsilli? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Andriani? Yes. Motions pass. Thank you. Okay. Number 14, non certificated personnel transportation. Mongan will move. One and two. Ms. Mongan has moved. Uh, Mr. Singh will second. Thank I'll you second, very much. Yes. Any discussion? No. Mr. Mara? Orsilli? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Andriani? Yes. Motions pass. Thank you. Number 25, supplies, equipment, and services. We are having uh, numbers one through five. Dunn will make a motion, supplies, equipment, and services, items one through five. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Do I have a second? Ms. Hopman, thank you very much. Any discussion? Okay. Borsilli? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Andriani? Yes. Motions pass. Thank you. 26, transportation. Numbers one, two, and three. May I have a motion? Mongan will move. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Mongan and Mr. Weber. Thank you very much. Any discussion? No, Mr. Mara. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Orsilli? Yes. Andriani? Yes. Motion is passed. Okay. Um, we're in miscellaneous. Um, these are just for a point of order, Mr. Mara. It says January. We need to have that change to February. Where? On number two. On number two. On the table two. Oops, okay. Okay. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll get into discussion. I have a few things we need to do. So. This is miscellaneous one, two, as amended to um, February, not January, um, through seven, one through seven. May I have a motion? Hoffman will make a motion. Thank you, Ms. Hoffman. We're almost done, guys. Let's have a second. Mongan will second. Thank you, Ms. Mongan. Okay. Um, discussion, yeah, um, like only because it's personal to me, I'm missing on a few of the, the items in number two. 
Um, the board retreat, I'm not mentioned at all. I was there. And number, um, the last one, the Finance Committee of the Whole. Ms. Kibler did double duty, so one of those is supposed to be me. Okay. Anybody else missing from any of those? No? Okay. Don, I have one question, though. On, okay. on uh, number six, the calendar adjustment. On the revised calendar, it shows June 2014, 13 days in parentheses. But unless I'm counting wrong, it's uh, 15 days. The revised calendar at the end of schedules and attachments. That, that has to do with the built-in snow days. So there's a certain amount of instructional days, and then when you build the calendar, you put the two additional built-in snow days into there. So if the snow days never happened, which they did, um, you would have deducted two days from that calendar and gone from the 15 instructional days to the 13. It's, it's still, it's still going to work out to be 15 instructional days, even though there's more built into it. You know, so, so in other words, let's hope for no snow next year. Right. <laughs> so th the, June is always, the June is always depending on the winter weather. So okay. if there is no, ins no snow days, then you get out two days earlier. If there is snow days, then two days get tacked on. Okay. Thank Ms. you. Mrs. President, yes. can we pl please read into the record and for our wonderful citizens on television what the new calendar is going to be? Because there's a lot of innuendo and misinformation out there in the school world that we're taking back some of the holidays, Memorial Day, you know, some of the uh, high holy days. So if we can read this to the television audience so they, they, they know what this is all about. Okay, Mr. Dunn, thank you very much. But um, Mr. Sedino, this is um, the district calendar. Would you please? Sure. Um, so the board will be voting on the following modifications to the 13-14 calendar. When the calendar was adopted last year, it had two take-back days uh, built into it, actually three. One, the first one being Martin Luther King Day, but we did not exceed our snow days until after that federal holiday. So the first one available was Monday, February 17th. Students were in session that day. On Friday, April 11th, that is a contractual half day uh, for, for staff uh, prior to the spring break. The board has graciously agreed to make that a full day in conjunction with uh, Friday, February 23rd, which is another contractual half day, make that a full day. While it does not get us back to the 182 instructional days, it does, it does bring us to 181 days, but brings us the same time on task. So the board agreed to that, the OBA agreed to that. So that's why those two half days become full days, uh, even though it still loses one instructional day. So just to clarify, Friday, April 11th will be a full day of instruction. Monday, April 14th will be a school day of instruction, and that was the first day of the spring break. Friday, April 23rd will be a full day of instruction. Monday, June 23rd will be a half day of instruction and will be the last instructional school day. Old Bridge High School graduation will then move to June 24th uh, on the Tuesday and Wednesday, June 25th, will be a, the staff in service day that was scheduled for the 24th. That'll be moved to the 25th. Thank you, Mr. Citadino. But I believe you said Friday, April 23rd. It's May 23rd. May 23rd, I'm sorry. Okay, just since we're clarifying, let's clarify. Okay. That, so a, a clarification letter will go out to the, uh, to the staff. Uh, the information will be put on the district website, and it's already on my Twitter account as we speak. That means all, your st all the students know because they follow you. And I have to really commend <laughs> Deb Noor and uh, Mr. Rezes at Salk School. What they've done was take the Twitter, uh, my Twitter feed, which is the district Twitter feed for the superintendent, and now it's linked right on the district webpage. So anything I tweet is actually on the district page. So we had a um, situation today where Texas Road was closed down because of a motor vehicle accident. As I tweeted it, it went automatically updated on the district webpage, and as parents went there looking for information about the delay, they were able to see it there instantaneously. So communication is moving right along. Thank you very much. All right, we're ready to vote now, I think, Mr. Mayor. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Silikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Borsilli? Yes. Prima? Yes. Andriani? Yes. Motions pass. Thank you.
Number 28 is board secretary <coughs> and board business, and I would like to add, um, read this into the record. Um, there's only one um, on here. It's our goals that have been formulated after our board retreat. Improvement of educational opportunities for all students. Successful implementation of Achieves New Jersey for the teacher and principal evaluation model to develop a long-range plan to address enrollment, facility, and students' needs in a fiscally responsible manner, increase collaboration and communication with all stakeholders, and to ensure safe and secure facilities, including a learning environment for all students and staff. And I believe that we're moving towards those as you hear us have discussion up on the um, table. Mr. Saladino, are you looking for something in particular? I'm just looking for a question, something else on the agenda, but okay. that is very accurate. We are moving towards those goals as we speak. All right. Um, may I have a motion for number 28? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Weber. Mr. Brasilli? Sure, I will second it. Mr. Brasilli will second. I don't believe there's any discussion. Any board member want to chime in on this? Okay, Mr. Mara, roll call. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Solikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Borsilli? Yes. De Prima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Andriani? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. At this point, hearing of residents on any district issue? Seeing no hands, we will move along. We've added an old business and a new business section. If there's any discussion on old business, this would be the, the opportunity for board members to speak. Mr. Brasil? I'd, I'd like to just ask one question. Um, we've had a number of uh, discussions regarding the real-time messages that are going out. And although they're very, very helpful, um, I know as a parent myself, my concern is when I start getting messages from the schools in the middle of the afternoon because especially when I'm at work and, uh, and I could be in a meeting or something and I'm sure a lot of parents have this going on they, a million things going on in the middle of the afternoon and it winds up becoming the boy that cried wolf right you see your your child's school phone number come up and all year long you're you're quick to answer the meet the, the call you, you're in a meeting or something you excuse yourself you step out you answer the phone it's a real-time message about a PTA event or, uh, you know, I don't know, anything, you know, uh, about the next half day or, or something on a schedule or whatever it might be. And as the school year goes on, you continue to get these messages in the middle of the afternoon and you start to say, it's real time. But actually, it's the school calling you because something potentially has happened at the school, right? Um, and, and, it, and it actually happened to me. Uh, over the past couple of weeks, my, my son actually got hurt in, in gym class and he fell down and he hit his head and I ignored the message. I ignored the phone call because I just assumed it was a real-time message. And then they called my wife and she was at work and couldn't get to the phone. And then they called me again and I said, well, wow, something must really be up. So I answered it and sure enough, he was fine. It was the school nurse just letting us know that he, he, he fell down and hit his head and everything was okay. Um, and, and I appreciate them giving us the call, but again, it becomes a boy that cried wolf. So if we can kind of limit those calls at least until maybe the evening time, so that if, if a school phone number comes up on my phone or any parent's phone in the middle of the afternoon, they actually know that it, it, it's the school calling because they really need to speak to you. Or potentially, is there a possible way so that all of the messages go out of one phone number? So when I see that one phone number, I know that that's the real-time phone number. But if I see the school's phone number, I know that that's the school. Is that possible? I, I don't believe the, the um, location of them all coming out of the same because it's dumped through POTS lines. I don't think it, that can happen, but I will uh, work with the administration to only send out emergency, like if there's, uh, sometimes we'll have a, an activity that's canceled during the day or the kids are coming home right after school, no after school activities. Um, or sometimes uh, even like a sporting event, like your son's playing soccer but the game's canceled because the other team can't make it. Um, those are things you need to know on a timely basis. But unless it's a t time necessary announcement to try to have them happen at the same time between five and seven in the evening. 
Okay. Yeah, I, I, I do know that most of the messages they try to send out at like 6 o'clock, right? I know especially like the PTA messages and so on. But I, I don't know. I just seem to have gotten a lot recently throughout the course of the day, and then it becomes, you know, that issue. But th thank you. Thank you, Mr. So That sounded very reasonable to me. Anybody else? Old business? Mr. City Leader. I, I just want to make sure we have a <coughs> clarification, just something. It jogged my memory from the agenda meeting. Um, Ms. Kilburn, I'm not meaning to put you on the spot, but if we go back to page 8 under curriculum, so we don't have to do this again at another meeting. It was brought up at the, the agenda meeting um, to have uniformity with the word revise as he revises written there once. Number Item number 6 and 5, are those r to be written, uh, reconstructed, or revised? Mr. Cittadino, they should all be revised. Um, as I explained at the agenda meeting, everything that is, every subject area that is under the New Jersey Core Curriculum Content Standards is just a revision because those standards have been in existence for a number of years. The only uh, curricular guides that would be a total re rewrite would be anything that falls under language, English language arts, literacy and math because those are the new common core standards. Uh, we did receive notification that there is a hearing again on the, um, the science standards. Uh, there are some uh, public meetings being held to discuss the core curriculum content, the common core standards for science, but everything else still falls under the New Jersey um, core curriculum content standards. So it's just um, a, a, you know, a tweaking of it. Yes, and I do believe I, I had indicated that um, after uh, the agenda meeting that they should be um, well. That's correct. Okay, thank you. I don't know if we need to take revisit that in action again. I believe that based on the discussion from last week, I believe this is an administrative clarification on what the board already understood it was approving. So you do not need to re-vote on this one, but the record needs to reflect that it was clarified by Mrs. Kibler. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I don't see any. Right, um, anyone else for old business? I know I asked once before. Doesn't look like anyone else has it. Mr. Huntman? Okay. But I don't know whether it's under old business, new business, or just my comments. Okay. Um, well, we're going to move. different programs that I have been to. Well, let's make it new business. Fine. We, made, we made a decision. All right, so we're moving into new business, and Ms. Hopman has a few things that she would like to state. First of all, I would like to comment on the cosmetology meet and greet that took place in February. I happened to go to it, and it was a wonderful program. Um, I want to thank uh, Trish Pelahanke and Robin Lasses for um, putting it all together. It showed anybody coming in what they do. You got to speak to some of the students that were there, and you know it was really wonderful to to see, you know, what this program does which I don't know what people are aware of, but it, it really is the only vocational program where they can actually go and get a state license from. And I'm very glad that it's there, and you know they do a wonderful job with it, and the girls were phenomenal. So I just wanna you know, comment on that. And um, also the same night they had a talent show going on, and it was put together by the junior class advisors, Raphael Colon and Holly Forentino, and I happened to go in and sit down and listen to um, some of these kids and the entertainment that they brought forward and they were absolutely phenomenal. I expect someday, hopefully if I'm, you know, by the time they get out of school, and I would, I would not be surprised to see them actually on TV. Um, some of their voices were absolutely outstanding and their performances were, it, they were phenomenal. Um, and, you know, I would just like to thank the junior class advisors for that. Also, I had the opportunity of going to the band competition as Mr. DePrima was also there. And uh, we, we were asked to give out some of the awards and, you know, the program was absolutely, it was wonderful. It was a wonderful program. 
and it just shows the dedication of the employees that we have in this district and how they teach these children going forward and the girls were absolutely great I, and I had to comment on that because it just it, it, some of it you know and it was other school districts also it, it would take your breath away just to see you know how well they were trained in doing what it was they needed to do for the band and um, one other thing, I had the opportunity of going to Parent University, which I have probably gone to every once since it was first put into effect with um, Ms. Kibler. And um, it is such an educational experience for any of the parents that go there because, you know, each one of the setups in the room shows you what each one of the schools do with the children, you know, from, from the first grade all the way up, if there are any questions that need to be asked, they had workshops for the parents. It, w it was such a wonderful experience to see it. And, you know, the paraprofessionals and the, the table that they had and, you know, giving out information to people who were asking questions, the YMCA was there. It was just such a community effort on the part of the employees and the children and some of the things that they did that you could actually see at each one of the tables SEPTA, they all were there. Everybody was there. And it, it was such, a, you know, I'm just so glad that you continued to still have this going. And, you know, our s assistant superintendent was there, Mrs. Ms. Hoker, along with our superintendent, Mrs. Cetadino. And I have to tell you that um, he kind of took my breath away because he had like a, a forum, you know, in the beginning of the parent university and parents came in and they sat down and Sal I think you were there I, I missed his presentation okay. but I was right. in the other part of the um, room and you know he was speaking to the people that were in the room and it was basically about giving back to the community all of the things that we could do to give back to the community and you know he would ask different questions in reference to different things and you know, some of the parents would answer. And he gave everybody that came into the room an envelope. And it was a sticker on it, and it said, do not open. Up until the end, he gave a little presentation on a homeless man and how, you know, he asked somebody if they had money to make a long story short. The windup was this fellow told him that he was giving him a lottery ticket that it was a winner. They went to the store. He gave the lottery ticket in. He, gave, he wound up with $1,000. It wasn't a winner. It was this person giving him the money. And, you know, it was, just, it was just such a wonderful presentation that he gave. And at the end of the presentation, then he asked us to open the envelope. And there were quite a few people in the room and each one of them had an envelope. And when we opened it, there was $5 in each envelope from the superintendent, who then requested that the people that had the envelopes give it out to a worthy cause back to the community. It absolutely took my breath away, okay, as did all of the other people that were in the room. At that point in time, Larry Redman was there, who was involved with the Relay for Life. Okay, the majority of the people in that room handed him that money towards the Relay for Life. But if it wasn't for Dave giving it out to begin with, you know, we would have waited until the Relay for Life in June and would have done it then. So I really would like to thank you for that. I think it was something that, you know, I have not seen done in quite some time. And Dave is right, it's always good to be able to give back to the community and we certainly did that night because of his gestures that we wound up doing it. And he had a little story that went with it, but I'm, I won't go into that, okay, because it had to do, you know, with some stuff. But I, I, what he also e explains and educates his children on, he brought forward to these people. And believe me when I tell you, the people in the room were taken back over it. And like I said, again, thank you, Dave, because I just think it was a wonderful thing for you to do. Um, I just want one more to say that, you know, I want to thank the transportation department and the maintenance department for everything that they did to get these children
to school safe throughout this whole winter of nothing but snow. Okay, you know, the shoveling and getting rid of all the snow to get the schools open and the transportation department and all those people with the buses getting out to get these children and getting them to the school safe. Okay, it just goes to show you what kind of employees Oakbridge Township has. We have wonderful employees in this district. Okay, which we should never have to try and get rid of for any reason, budget-wise or not. All right, and I just want to comment on the fact that we did have a meeting last night with SEPTA in reference to field day, for the SEPTA field day. And correct me if I'm wrong, it will be May 11th? 4th. Okay. Um, and, you know, for the people that were there last night, Melanie and Jim and along with Allison and, you know, all of the other people that were at this meeting, to put together this program for field day. I know this will, this will be the third year that it's in effect, okay, and I was involved with it when we had it the first year. I'm looking forward to it. If you guys can, anybody who would like to get involved with it, you know, please contact Central Administration along with Mr. Tui, Mrs. Voss, okay, try and get involved in it. It's a wonderful experience to watch these children, okay, and it's just here we are we're giving back again to the community that's what we're supposed to be here for other than that i guess i'm finished <laughs> all right thank you thank you miss hartman um we're still in in new business and Ms. um miss kibler would um if you have anything to add or dr holker i did say i would ask the the two of you if you wanted to say something at each meeting this might be an opportunity for you to do so Thank you, Mrs. Andriani. I just would like to thank everyone, you know, for their attendance at uh, Parent University. Something was brought to my attention that I found was very, very interesting. That the reason why we have such a pretty good turnout is that the children encourage their parents to come to Parent University because they love the activities that go on in the child care section. And I really have to commend um, Mrs. Beerson and Ms. Jeanette and um, the child development uh, high school students who participate in Parent University, they do such a wonderful job of um, providing a very safe and secure environment for the children while the parents attend the workshop. So um, I have to really thank the children because they're encouraging the parents to come to Parent University. And certainly the ROTC and the peer, peer students for assisting uh, with the program throughout the evening. So uh, all of these people contribute to making it a wonderful success, along with our staff who presents the workshops um, throughout the evening. So it's a great night, and um, I always look forward to it. And I have to commend my office staff for the, um, the, all their efforts in putting this together, because it is a tremendous amount of work that goes into it. So I thank everyone. I just want to thank the schools for their invitations for Read Across America. I can't, can't express how much joy was gained in going around and seeing all of the kids and not being with them every day. At this point, I enjoy getting out into the buildings and I was able to read um, a parody on Goodnight Moon, which was Goodnight iPad. So many of the kids got a kick out of that book. and. Uh, it, it took me back to be with them. So, and there, there were wonderful things going on in each of the schools. I was very sorry that I missed Mrs. Foley's plunge into the uh, Jello. I did see the pool of Jello. I only saw pictures afterwards, but there were other great things that were going on throughout the district. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hoker. All right. Mr. President, the, I have uh, well, some go new to business. the order or new business? No, new business, please. Okay. Um, some of the things that go unnoticed, I, I'd like to commend Mrs. Kim Kastain. I, I believe her title is Energy Efficiency Coordinator. If I'm reading the numbers right, she was giving these papers out at Parent University. Um, through her efforts and whoever else works with her, we saved $214,429 this year in uh, energy cuts. Couple that with the $349,000 last year. So we're a little bit over a half a million dollars in energy savings thanks to, Ms. thanks to Mrs. Kastain and her efforts. I applaud you. Um, also, uh, on a different new, uh, new business, um, I don't know if everybody is aware, we're having the Future Chefs competition this uh, Saturday afternoon where the young students of our district prepare healthy foods. Uh, it's a nice event. I was there last year as a judge. We, I was asked to go back this year. I believe Dr. Hoker and Mr. Mara, 
I'm sure, I think will be joining me. I'm not sure who, but if you have nothing to do Saturday afternoon, come out and support our young chef, young future chefs. Thank you. Mr. Dup, uh, one o'clock, eleven o'clock, eleven o'clock. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? New business. I'm hearing my name. No. Okay. Um, go to the order, Mr. Vercelli, Why don't we start sure. your end? And we'll I'll, I'll try to. I'll try to be brief. Um, okay. But I, I just um, I wanted to echo a lot of comments that were made already. Um, I'll start with the Read Across America because it is one of my, my favorite events throughout the year. Um, I too thank everybody that invited me out um, to read uh, at their schools. I was able to make a handful of them. Unfortunately, due to uh, weather and some needing to reschedule, it made it difficult on my, on my schedule to make all of the ones that I had hoped to. Um, and that was quite unfortunate because I really do enjoy uh, participating in those. Um, but I will certainly um, make an extra effort next year to attend those schools um, because I really, it's, it's, it's a fun time reading to the students. I love reading those books. Um, uh, they, just, they just crack me up, the kids, when, when I'm reading the books and they really get into the stories. Um, so it's a lot of fun and it was a lot of really terrific events that went on. Um, Parent University was terrific. Uh, I thank Ms. Kibler and, and the whole administrative staff uh, for putting together another wonderful night. Um, and yes, Ms. Kibler, the, the child care is absolutely fabulous, um, as my daughter will test to, because she just uh, loves it and I can barely carry out all of the artwork that she creates in just a short period of time with those, uh, those kids there. So uh, they have a great time and it really makes it easy for my wife and I to be able to attend. Um, and it was extra important this year because my, my son will be attending high school next year and, and you know my wife really wants to understand what, what she needs to expect so she really wanted to be a part of it as well. Um, so that was that was terrific. Um, and that's that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. DePrima? Yeah, um, I'd like to echo everybody else what they're saying about Parent University. Ms. Gibble, good job. Thank you. Um, I, I think we all received a letter that um, Mr. Cittadino uh, alluded to earlier from Mrs. Debbie Long just praising it beyond uh, <laughs> thought it was very good. Um, I'd like to just congratulate everybody that was recognized tonight. Uh, and on a personal note, I'd like to, uh, especially Mr. La Peruta, my son had him as an Italian teacher when he was here in high school, and, and he did make a difference in my son's Italian class career. So congratulations to everybody, especially Mr. La Peruta. Um, that's it. Thank you. Okay, we'll go this way. Mr. Singh? Yeah, I just want to um, appreciate Mr. Mar and... Um, Everybody who has worked uh, making this uh, budget possible, you know, everything went well. But um, uh, there were some concerns, though, I, so I had to go that way. Um, I want to commend the work done by the administration, Mr. Siraduno, everybody. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Ms. Mangan. I just, <clears throat> I would just like to encourage anyone that has any questions on any items of the budget or any of the other committees, and everyone is announced when their meeting dates are coming up, and um, keep involved with your, your children and with the school system. And, um, and good night. Thank you. Mr. Dunn? Yes, first of all, I just want to give a big shout out to the fifth graders at Cooper Elementary School. They had the talent show a few weeks ago, and Gene Simmons did a wonderful job. Dr. Miskowitz was there, and, and, and we had a great time. And uh, there's a lot of talent out there in Cliffwood Beach, and, and uh, they did a great job. So I, I'm very happy to, to recognize them, and uh, they should be applauded. Uh, number two, uh, I just want to um, say thank you from the South Oldbridge Fire Department. Uh, we were able to utilize the facility at Lombardi Field for, for some state mandate, um, mandated training on the 10th, and it made our lives a bit easier, and you will be getting a letter of thanks from Chief Robert Verney, um, thanking the administration and the Board of Education uh, for the use of the facility for the firefighters. Um, number three, I want to thank um, Donna for her, Donna Kibler for her commitment to Parent University. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend. I heard it was a huge success as it, as it always is. And I had uh, some fire department uh, activities that I had to attend. But thank you again for your commitment with Parent University. It's a great, great, great thing. Also, I just want to thank my fellow board members this evening uh, for uh, voting yes uh, for the uh, tentative budget uh, for 2014-2015. Uh, I, I believe the philosophy is to 
give the power, the knowledge, and the resources to our children to be self-reliant as they become adults. I think that's what the goal is, is to give the children the power and the knowledge to be able to support themselves as they move in to, 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 to adulthood. And I think that we've, we are doing the right thing by them, and that's a philosophy that we must strive for. Third, uh, fourthly, I just want to thank again, I want to echo what uh, Ms. Hopman said about the, the maintenance division and also the transportation. We had a horrible winter, as we all know. We had nine plus storms of seven inches or more, which is very uh, uh, difficult to deal with during a, a, a school day, and I think that they did a wonderful job. And even though we were over budget this year by a, a substantial amount of money, overall we did well. So thank you, and have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Mr. Sulikowski? Any comments? Yeah, a couple of words. Um, yes, I would like to uh, thank and acknowledge all the students in our recognition portion of the program. They did a fantastic job, the Special Olympics. Uh, the Elks Club for uh, being partners with the Board of Education, uh, especially when they came down to give us $1,000, and also, uh, I guess, uh, supporting hooked on uh, fishing, not on drugs, which is very, very important in our society. I would like to acknowledge and thank uh, the guidance counselor with 20 something years of service. I knew her, I worked with her for a couple of years. She did a fantastic teacher. And that's it, good night. Thank you, Mr. Selikowski. Um, no, uh, you can go after her, I'm done. Go ahead. All right, um, there are so many unsung heroes in this district. And um, you know, my mother always said, if you can't say something nice about somebody, don't say anything at all. Um, we all sit up here and we all have, all have reasons for being here, but the one thing that connects us all is that we all believe in community service and giving back to the place where we live and trying to make Old Bridge a better place. And from where we sit, all of our schools, all of our support staff, teachers, children, you can walk into any building. Let me take that back. With security measures there, you can't do that. But if you were able to walk into any building at this point, um, you'd see positive learning environments at each and every one of them. And I applaud everyone that helps us provide that opportunity to all of our students. And with that, I'm going to leave um, my last comment to Mr. Cittadino. He has some information about one of our graduates that um, he would like to put out into the public record. I received some information today, um, and I sent it out to our staff and to our board members. Uh, I firmly believe in life you need to find uh, somebody who inspires you and as an administrator, as an educator, as a human being, um, when I came across Evan Ruggiero, who is a graduate of Old Bridge Public Schools, I was truly inspired. If you don't know Evan, he uh, graduated from our school district. He went on to uh, fulfill his, or looking towards his dream of be getting a degree in musical theater at Montclair State College and I believe it was his freshman year, it was discovered that he had cancer. Um, that cancer, uh, he fought it, and in the end, he uh, lost his leg in that fight, but he also gained a spirit and a positivity that is really inspirational to anyone. As you look through the, what happens to you in life, and you look at the monotony of your daily life and your problems, he truly puts into perspective his positivity of someone who's overcome uh, those challenges. And he got back on his uh, feet. Um, he uses a prosthetic device, and he's dancing again. He graduated with a degree in musical theater. He's recognized on television and stage worldwide. Um, and just to sum up what he's up to and what he's going to do, be doing um, up so in the next uh, course of the year is that he will be uh, off to California in June for this summer and be performing in a theater, he'll be performing in a theater company there and then traveling to Amsterdam in September for their annual TAP Festival and for the nation. And in October, he comes back to the U.S. for his tour of teaching children da tap dancing through Showstoppers Dance. Uh, why I tell you this, Evan is also was booked for a one-man show at 54 Below. It's, in a, it's Broadway's premier supper club. And it's a one-night-only event on Saturday, March 29th at 11 p.m. And I know that is late, but it's not late by New York City standards by any means. Uh, it is my goal to share this information with you so the Old Bridge community can go out and help him sell out his first show, and we can illustrate to the tri-state area how we represent our own. 
And if he sells that out, who knows, maybe there'll be more shows to come. Uh, and I do know he doesn't forget where he comes from because he also brought with him uh, two Old Bridge High School graduates to accompany them on the show. Uh, if you'd like more information about that, I will put it on the district website. Uh, you can click on http forward slash 54 below dot com artist slash Evan Ruggiero. That information will be there. Um, let's try to sell out that night and show him uh, that we love him for his support and his perseverance. Thank you. At this, at this point, adjournment? No. No. Sorry. You need a motion for executive session, a very brief executive session. Don't that, look at me like that, John. That's Chandler. a surprise. Uh, with regard to a personnel I'm matter. Not, I'm not putting that motion out there. <laughs> 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 well, I, I know I can't ask Mr. Dupreme for a motion for that. So is there anyone who would like to have a motion for executive session? I will session? make a motion as long as he promises it will be brief. I, I do promise Brief. that. Brief. All right, Mr. Brasilli makes the motion. Do I have a second? M reluctantly, Mr. Singh is seconding. Thank you. Mr. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Borsilli? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Weber? Andriani? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Can we come back? We'll be back to adjourn. We will only come back to adjourn. So I bid everyone a, you can wait if you'd like. It's supposed to be brief, but. <laughs>